morning, my friend. Welcome to Sunday. Welcome to Sunday. <laughs> Got somebody yelling at me already. Welcome to Sunday here in Boulder, Colorado. We're at 28th and Pearl. That's what's right over behind me here. That's 28th and Pearl. And uh, we are right in front of Floyd's Barbershop there, right there behind the uh, pine tree. And then uh, right there are Starbucks. And then, uh, anyways, a lot of stores, natural grocers right across the street. And there's Target over there, over my shoulder. And uh, this is a very important location. I've been coming here every Sunday uh, since the very beginning. Uh, my first corner was uh, directly across the street, right over there. That's where I started. I started there May 26, Sunday, uh, 3 p.m., 2019. So we're in my fourth year, so that's pretty cool. Oh, guess what, too? That's kind of cool. Uh, today, uh, on this day, around, let's see, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, right at about 4 o'clock, thereabouts, I'll cross the 4,000-hour mark. 4,000 hours I've been flying my banner. Not this one here, because I have a new banner every year. This is my, uh, this is, uh, it says Jesus Christ there, but this banner here is called the God Bless You Banner. God Bless You. And uh, that's what this is called. Next year I have a new, another banner. I'm almost done with it. Been working with the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit's been working with me. I don't know how that goes, but uh, we are going to have a new banner coming out January 1st, 2024. And uh, anyways, uh, that's when I started lifting the banner. Uh, 4,000 hours of holding this thing up. 4,000 hours of flying this thing. It's a lot of hours, and uh, one hour a time. It adds up after a while. One hour creates 4,000 of those hours. So let me put this down. I'll do my scripture short for the day and then the today's sermon. I love you. See you in a few moments. my pants up every time I come over here losing weight out here don't eat as much as I used to so I keep decreasing weight a lot of people keep gaining weight and I'm the other way I gain I lose weight I can't hardly believe it uh, I was heavier in high school bigger in high school than I am now still wear the same size pants though but uh, I need a belt <laughs> now I have a belt on but I'm already at the end of the uh, notches on the belt Working hard, putting in about, uh, I don't know, 12 to 14 hour days for the Lord. Uh, it's just uh, something that I'm doing. I don't want anybody to copy me. I don't want anybody to, to uh, say, I'm gonna do exactly what Preacher John's doing. I, I don't want you to do that. That would not be scriptural as far as I'm concerned because uh, we don't answer to man. Uh, we answer to God. We work for God, not for man. Uh, we get our information from God, not from man. Uh, what man does as a Christian, as a preacher, as a minister, as a teacher of Jesus Christ, is we should, a good one, a, you know, one that's really uh, doing what God wants them to do, will always point you back to Jesus. Every one of them will always point you back to Jesus. Uh, and if they're not working for Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, that Jesus, uh, and what, they're, what they do then is they point themselves to division, they point you to uh, man, they point you to uh, laws, they point you to tradition, they point you to philosophy, they point you what they think something says, uh, and they'll 
take your eyes and some are very convincing. I mean, they are, some are very smart, highly intelligent with lots of uh, degrees behind their name, a lot of little letters behind their name, and uh, maybe have a tremendous following. But even that, uh, you need to, or some who have no following, I mean, it doesn't really matter uh, because everyone seems to have their own view of who Jesus is or who what the Bible is or how it should be preached or how you should live, all that kind of stuff. The reason I'm talking like this right here in the front of the video is because uh, here lately, as my subscriber count's been increasing, my view counts, everything's kind of been increasing, you know, steadily. Uh, uh, that attracts more attention from other uh, people who think that I should be doing something different or that they think I'm a uh, corrupt preacher, that I am not a, uh, uh, I am uh, some uh, ungodly person of some sort. I don't know, they, you know, so you're getting a lot of, you know, and I delete some and sometimes I'll post, but I just don't get that on YouTube. I get that in all forms and fashions and uh, because I'm visible and available to the whole world. And so therefore, I am uh, receiving lots of stuff <laughs> that I never used to receive because everything I did was sort of, sort of private. But uh, when I started Gospel Evangelist Church here in 2017, uh, that changed to be public rather than private. So my life got toggled in from private to uh, public. <laughs> and I became a public figure of sorts. And, uh, and so why, and the reason I'm saying that is you might be listening to people who seem right, who appear right, who uh, kind of seem like they have all their ducks in a row, I guess you'd say, seems almost like they're following God, but maybe not a little problems here and there but they're okay they're really nice and they're very friendly and uh, maybe they smell nice they look nice I mean I don't know uh, maybe have they're very good at talking and all their words are pronounced really well or maybe they have a great expensive camera set up and microphone set up and they're very good at editing and you know all that kind of stuff well I don't have any of that what I just mentioned zero uh, I am who I am I'm using my cell phone for my camera. I'm using this little tiny three inch microphone on top of the microphone and I'm using a $20 tripod and uh, and I use a free website, a free, uh, uh, a free uh, a stripped down basic uh, 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 video editing thing and I don't really edit. I just put it up there and do a few color changes to make sure the color looks okay, make sure the sounds, you can hear, at least hear it and uh, I put my, you know, some scriptures and things like that. But I don't do a lot to it, uh, but I do enough that it takes me a couple hours, believe it or not, because I'm very slow at doing whatever I'm doing. Other people can probably do what I'm doing in 30 minutes. It takes me two hours. It just, you know, it just takes me a long time. But uh, because of that, uh, you don't want to follow people. I mean, you really don't. You take them as an example, yes. You learn from them, you take an example, then you don't do it. You take all that to God. And then you reason with God and you take it you know, through the scriptures and you make sure everything is lined up with the Bible. And, uh, and, then, God, and then God will kind of change things around. He may take a little bit from this guy, a little bit from this woman, mix things together from this church, this ministry, whatever. Or he won't take any of it and have you do something different. Now, if he wants you to do something different, okay, what I mean by different is nobody else is really doing it. Like this last week, I had three people say, John, you're one of a kind. I've had three people last week. I couldn't believe it. In one week, say, nobody like you. You're one of a kind. And sometimes that kind of, I mean, I appreciate that, but that's kind of how I've always been. <laughs> I've always been that way, uh, kind of born that way. But it doesn't mean that I'm going against God and creating some 
other thing or building some other foundation uh, or some other uh, religion or some other cult or something that's outside of Christ it doesn't mean any of that. It just means my delivery style, my methodology, how I do things, how I commit my life to God is uh, <laughs> God, God bless you. how I read the Word of God. You know, it just doesn't look like somebody else. It doesn't look like or appear or sound like another preacher or another church. It seems to be unique, a peculiar. Well, that's what Paul Peters said. We're peculiar people. And uh, so, but to live that kind of ministry, that kind of lifestyle of being one of a kind or different from everybody else, you have to know who you are. You can't be wishy-washy. You can't be wondering anything. You have to know exactly where you stand because if you're different, there's going to be a multitude of people that are going to come against you. And that's why I tell people, you got to, even if you're not that type of person, all of us as Christians have to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. That's our groom. We're the bride. He's the bridegroom. We're the bride. We're the bride of Christ. Or however you want to say that. Wife of Christ. Anyways, I say this because too many Christians or wannabe Christians or so-called Christians or think they're Christians. I mean, I'm trying to cover everybody there. But somebody in, that, in the Christian Bible, let's say anybody who looks at the Christian Bible, uh, you need to put your eyes on Jesus and take your eyes off of people because we don't lean or trust on people. You don't lean on me. You don't trust in me. You don't get your information from me. You don't do any of that. You do that with Jesus Christ. I didn't die on the cross for your sins. I didn't do that. I'm just like you. I'm like everybody else out here. I was born with sin and I had to have a savior. You know, there's only one that was perfect and that's Jesus Christ. And that's who you look to all the time, all the time. You're always asking Jesus, what is it you want me to do next? How about this? How about that? How's this going? Am I doing okay? I mean, you're constantly dialoguing back and forth with Jesus. <clears throat> now, let me add one more thing to that, and I'll get into the prayer, then the scripture. One more thing I went into that is if you are, uh, are you are doing something that is contrary, how can I say this? Contrary, opposite, or opposing, uh, the Bible. How can I say this? Uh, uh, um, it's kind of a delicate issue here. I want to say this because it's really on my heart, and that is there are people who attack and so called rebuke and so called re all those funny words uh, come against uh, Christians. Now, they tell you that you're using the wrong Bible. Uh, they tell, you know, I say that a lot too. But you can use any Bible to get saved. I mean, you can read, I read, you know, I read the Berkeley version. I got saved using the Berkeley version, right? I, did, I didn't read the King James until just 10 years ago. So for 40 years, I wasn't even in the King James. So that, that you know, I, I just, so it does, you know, you could probably read the Passion Translation and get born again, you know. But after you're being born again, because it's not the Bible that saves you, you know, it's, uh, it's the blood of the Lamb of God. It's Jesus Christ who died on the cross, who was buried and rose on the third day, raised, res and then resur resurrected on the third day by His Father, which is in heaven, and then ascended back to the Father, on the right hand of the Father, and is our mediator between God and man, right now, this very second. And uh, so, but there are some who say, you cannot use the name of Jesus. You cannot call on the name of Jesus to get saved because that is a, a wicked name is what they say. They say it, that's a false church-made name, for example. Just giving this as an example. And, uh, but then they'll use the King James 
with all the Bible verses. I actually posted that on my YouTube channel. I actually let that guy allow, I allowed it because I had to okay every single comment. I actually put it up on the front end of the, of the uh, YouTube channel. Who, uh, who quoted some other stuff that said, uh, you know, if you use the name of Jesus, you're not saved. You're not born again. If that's a false man-made idol of some, you know, all this stuff, okay? But they use the King James. I mean, you can see it over there if you want to look at it. I think it's on Friday, Denver, uh, Netherlands YouTube video. The, you know, the Netherlands video they did. I think it's in that comment section down below that video. I think that's the one. And, uh, uh, so it's interesting to me how they attack people like myself, because that's what they're doing, he's attacking me, and he's trying to cause division, causing doubt, uh, and causing me to question. Now, it doesn't, doesn't bother me, personally. I could care less. I already know where I stand, and I already know that, you know, a lot of stuff, <laughs> based on the Word of God. Uh, but there are other people who are not as committed and as solid in Christ. There's a lot of fringe people, lots of fringe people. And people like that, that I allow, I wanted that to go online. I, uh, and there's another one who is saying to me that I'm a false teacher. I'm a false Christian. I'm a false minister. That there are a lot of false preachers. And you know, he's been using all these Bible verses. I put that up there too, all right? So, but you know, you notice something that's really interesting is uh, uh, they don't attack uh, the uh, Baha'i, or they don't attack uh, uh, Muslims, they don't attack, you know, Islam, they don't attack any, well, let me just say this, they don't attack any other religion. Every other religion other than Christianity is of Satan, period. I mean, it's point blank of Satan. Now, in the Christian religion, there is a massive portion that's also of Satan, all right? And in that Christian, of those, that massive portion that's of Satan inside Christianity, the religion of Christianity, there's another small section, kind of Bible calls it a remnant, a small portion, that are born-again saints of God. That's who I am. I'm a born-again saint of God and called to minister uh, as a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, to preach and teach Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Christ, the Messiah. All right? I, I'm sorry I'm going on a lot of detail, but it's just really an important topic here. And so, be alert to who you're listening to, who you're watching, and what you're reading, what you're taking in. Believe me, the times that we're living in is not getting easier to be a Christian. It's not getting easier. It's getting harder and harder and more difficult. Now, it's easy to call upon the name of the Lord and get saved. That's a piece of cake. But to get to that point of calling on Jesus, there is a lot of uh, junk going on, you know? I've been doing this a very long time, so it's changed dramatically. It's not like it was a long time ago. It's different, and uh, it's different. So because it's different, um, so just keep your eyes open. So that's why I pray, and it's in the scripture, it says, you have eyes to see, have ears to hear, and a heart to understand. Those, because the eyes are, in, are gates to the inside of you, ears are gates to the inside your mouth is a gate and your heart is what takes in all this information and if you don't know how to discern information you could easily easily very easily be swayed and the bible verse for that is the one that talks about even the elect could be deceived or something like that and the elect are the born-again saints of God. It's possible that even us could be deceived, be swayed off to the left or to the right. Because the scriptures are clear that a thousand are going to fall to our left. Yeah, a thousand. 
but to our right, 10,000 will fall. Yeah, that's pretty, and that's, those are people that are right next to us. But the scripture says they won't come near us, and there's a reason for that. So uh, be alert. I'm just, this is kind of an alertness. <laughs> uh, we're moving into a season here that, I'm talking about uh, in winter season, here on, in, on this western hemisphere, uh, we're moving into winter. The other, you know, southern hemisphere I, is uh, moving into, you know, summer, spring, summer. You know, we're moving fall and winter, right? So as the seasons change around the world, uh, devils sort of move around the world. Yeah, because in the wintertime, there's more opportunity to deceive people. And then, it, in, so there's certain devils. And then in the summertime, there are certain uh, opportunities to deceive people. It's just, uh, you know, a third of an unknown number of angels were cast out of heaven to earth. And yes, a lot of them are locked in chains in darkness, but many are here on earth. And, uh, okay. Now, I don't know what I just said all that, but it's just a, a warning, okay? Just to keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, and be alert to what is around you. Very alert very very aware my boss uh, for the first two years at my last company that I spent 27 years with uh, he told me for two years he said uh, pay strict attention to your driving every trip I had one to two trips every week up to Seattle and back around the I-5 corridor and uh, every trip he would say pay strict attention to your driving about that. In fact, it was so important that I wrote it on a sheet, put it in my logbook, and I carried it for 27 years. I've moved it from one logbook to the next every single month. And uh, it's how important it was to me. To, I would look at that often. Pay strict attention to your driving. And why did he keep saying that? I don't know, but I just took it as a, something that I needed to pay attention to because he was serious. And I guess they told everybody that because we had a lot of drivers and uh, we ran a hot, fast, heavy uh, run. I mean, we were the hard truckers. It wasn't just a laid back job, it was a very difficult job. And, uh, and you need to pay strict attention to your driving. So I'm telling you, pay strict attention to your spiritual walk in Christ. Pay strict attention to your spiritual walk, your physical walk in Christ. Let me rephrase that. Pay strict attention to your walk in Christ. Yeah, pay strict attention to your walk in Christ. I, th I think that's what I'm gonna do. That's brand new, I've never said that before in my life. It's the first time I've ever said it, ever in my entire life. So I think it's gonna be important. Pay strict attention to your walk in Christ. Let's pray. So Lord, I thank you that you can give us words out of the scripture and you can kind of put them together and it resonates within our spirit. It kind of, we, just sounds like it is holy and pure and we can meditate on that because it's scripture that we need to walk in Christ. We need to walk in the word of God. We need to walk faithfully and holy and pure that uh, what we're doing is troubling our city. What we're doing is troubling our family and our friends. It could be troubling our job, our workplace. It could be troubling all kinds of areas in our life. It could be our family members, our parents, or our brothers and sisters. It could be our people that we live around is troubling. But we want to keep our eyes on you, Jesus. We want to keep our ears on you, Jesus. We want to keep our heart pointed towards you, Jesus. And Lord, we invite you to uh, teach us the word of God by your spirit. So we welcome you, Holy Spirit, Spirit of truth. Spirit of God, Spirit of the Lord, to teach us the Word of God. And Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. For yours is the kingdom, and the glory, and the power, uh, forever and ever. In your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. So, uh, a lot of talking there. Hallelujah. Hope you heard all that. Be interesting when I get home, I'll edit this video. So, we're in the Sunday prayer letter. It came out this morning at 4 o'clock. I wrote it yesterday. Really enjoyed writing this letter. I don't know what it was about this letter. I read it several times going, man, this is a good letter. 
I kept saying to myself, man, Lord, this is a good, I thank you, Lord, this is a good letter. I liked it. I don't know why I liked it, but I just liked it. And it just kind of, it just, I liked it. And uh, once again, you know, it takes me, see, I sat down and started writing at about uh, 2 o'clock, and I was done at 7, so it's five hours. That's how long it takes me to put every week's letter together, five hours, sometimes six, but I got it down to about five hours. Very rarely that it's four and a half, hardly ever, but it's just about always five hours. Uh, it's 2,500 words long, and uh, yeah, there's some cut and paste in there, but uh, a lot of prayer, a lot of thought. It's called a prayer letter. I'm not just praying for people. I'm praying to God to give me something that I can write, and, uh, it's, it's a, and it comes out on Sunday. That's why it's Sunday prayer letter, and uh, it's just a... Uh, and if you're not subscribed to the email, I really strongly encourage you to, you know, sign up for it. I mean, we all have an email account. We all get email from every company, everything. We all have email. And why is there only 32 people out of thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of people that I've told about getting on the this email list of our Sunday prayer letter? Only 32, actually 30, because I'm on there twice, at two different email accounts, just to see how it's coming out. So actually only 30 people, uh, 30 people. You know, I think that uh, tells a lot of the body of Christ. That's a real telling number. That really says a lot to me. Now I may not say anything to you, but it says a lot to me. Not about me, but about the health of the body of Jesus Christ, you know? Now, if, I'm not talking about people who don't fall, don't listen to the sermons, who don't go to our church, who don't, uh, uh, who don't, aren't here, aren't listening, who are not a part of our podcast, who are not a part of our banner preaching. I'm not talking about those people. They don't even know I exist. I'm talking about those who are involved in our street ministry and our missionary church. Did you know people in our missionary church aren't subscribed to the email? What is that about? Uh, we've probably had 50 people come through our church in the last four years. And I'd say there's only a small, tiny sliver of people who are uh, subscribed to the church newsletter. Now, yeah, what's that about? It tells you the health of the body of Christ. And so that should quicken us to pray. That's why I talk the way I talk. That's why the way I talk, the way I talk. So I'm not trying to get you to have a better life. There's a lot of preachers out there that are trying to teach you how to have a better life here on earth. I want people to wake up and get out of bed and go do something for Christ. Jesus Christ, do something. Open your eyes and look around at the world. Open your ears to hear, not the eyes of the world, but eyes to see Jesus and what's going on, the body, the spirit world, and you're here and then ask the Holy Spirit to give you a, a heart that can understand what you're seeing and what you're hearing. And the reason why I say that is because of the parable of the sower. 75% of the people that hear the God, God's word Here's, here's the gospel, 75% that hears it, rejects it eventually, rejects it eventually. I mean, that's not talking about all the people who never hear the gospel. I mean, there's, everyone's gonna hear the gospel, everyone's gonna be able to make a choice, but I'm talking about people who, uh, you know, hear it on a regular basis, let's say. Anyways, only 25%, you know, it's kind of how I'm looking, because he, you plotted out four fields. So if the 100, let's say that's 100. I mean, you could probably say that's five and that's 15 and that's 18. And I mean, you could probably do that, but let's just keep it simple, okay? 25, 25, 25, 25, all right? I mean, it's, you know, quadrants. A quad is one quarter. One quarter of 100 is 25, all right? So, uh, uh, you know, a quarter has a, 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 a corner has 90 degree angles, you know, and another corner, another corner. So there, there's a square, so you can see it, how it can come to 25 right, without all those oddball numbers. So uh, just encourage you, 
I mean, you don't have to, but uh, you know, I don't spam anybody. I don't, uh, I don't ask for donations. Uh, I don't, uh, I just send out the letter once a week. That's all I do. Uh, when I send it out, uh, you can either open it or not open it, but it gives you some information, kind of touches base with you, uh, keeps me in your thoughts, uh, and you and my thoughts, because I look at all the subscribers and I pray over everybody when I go to the Convert Kit, our mail provider, and uh, I pray over everybody. And I saw another uh, uh, another new subscriber came on board. I was going, oh wow, this, he's on board. Wow, how about that? I mean, got excited, so I started praying for him. See, they don't know that, but I. That's what one of the benefits of being on the newsletter. I lift everybody up. I probably spent an hour. 45 minutes, hour, something like that, praying over the people and uh, doing work on the email account with everybody there. God bless you, Paige. <laughs> she must be having a hard day. She gave me a dirty look. <laughs> praying for, for the Lady Paige, P-A-G-E. She's heavily into Buddhism and uh, she practices all the the cultic practices of the Buddhist, and uh, she is lost and going to the lake of fire if she doesn't repent. But I've been talking to her for over four years, and uh, she's not there yet, but uh, she comes and goes. And uh, all right, so enough of the Sunday prayer there. The title for this week is called As His Manner Was. As His Manner Was. Uh, manner means uh, the way you do things, uh, lifestyle, uh, kind of how you put things together, just your look, uh, all kinds of things pertaining to how you do things, how you eat, how you do everything, your manner, your mannerisms. Okay? That's found in Acts 17, verse 2, and we're in the theme called Signs, Wonders, Miracles, Praise, Worship, and... Uh, I have a note here that today will cross over 4,000 4, hours. Isn't that an amazing hour? Isn't that an amazing number? 4,000 hours. You know, I'm headed for 10,000 hours. That's my objective. 4,000 is not my objective. Uh, I, I still have another 6,000 hours to go on the street, Lord willing. And uh, hope the Lord, you know, I mean, that's the idea. That's the plan. That's the vision. That's the calling. But uh, we'll see how that goes. And... Uh, but right now we're in the fourth, we're, we'll be finishing our 4,000th hour. Then on Monday, over there at Foothills and Belmont, I'll go to, I'll cross over that 4,000, 4,001 on to two, three, and four, whatever I do over there. Isn't that pretty cool? Uh, that's why I enjoy taking numbers because it kind of lets me know where I am, right? And if you don't keep track of all that stuff, then, then you can't see the scripture says, Lord, teach us to number our days. How do you know where you are in the numbers of your days if you don't keep track of the numbers? You just float along, hope things are going good for you, hope things are going good. Do -do 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 -do. You know, I mean, I don't know. I just start, I don't live that way, I'm sorry. I mean, I know you don't have to live that way, obviously, but uh, I, you know, I keep track of money, I keep track of tracks, I keep track of uh, everything <laughs> because God's keeping track of everything. You think God's not keeping track of everything? <laughs> every sparrow that falls, he keeps a track of. That's what it says. You know, every flower that dies, he keeps a track of that. He knows everything that's going on. There's nothing that's hidden from God. And if Jesus Christ, who's God, is our example, why don't we do what he does? I think that would benefit us. We can copy Jesus. How about a novel idea, right? Let's copy Jesus. <laughs> People don't like that. They want to live the way they want to live. They want to dress the way, I mean, their manner is totally different than Jesus. Would you say that as his manner was, do you think this manner was real similar to Jesus? Yeah, that's right. That is right. Because what did Jesus do? Same thing Paul did. What does Paul do? Same thing Jesus did. <laughs> what does John do? Same thing Jesus does. How about that? <laughs> I, everything Jesus does, I do. How about that? Isn't that a great example to follow Jesus, to copy Jesus, and stop copying man? I mean, 
Think about that. I mean, really, really stop and think, you know, I, I, I need to change the way I'm doing things in life. My manner is not like Jesus' manner. It's more like the guy down the street or the gal uptown, you know, you know or it's the way I, the, what the magazine I look at or it's the, uh, the newest fads that are out or the newest haircuts that are out or the newest coloring or the newest jewelry or the newest clothes or the newest this, the newest car, the newest home, the new, you know, whatever. It goes on and on and on and on. It's all about the cares of the world. Sorry. That's <laughs> the way it is. And I talk the truth, man. I'm sorry you don't like the truth. A lot of people just do not like the way I talk. They just hate it. And they accuse me continuously, have been since I was probably six years old. Because I've never been like anybody else. I've ne That's why my mom and dad were so hard on me. I was beat so much because they, they couldn't get me to be like uh, my brother and my sister. They couldn't get me to be like them. I didn't want to be like my dad, and I didn't want to be like my mom. And surely I didn't want to be like my brother or my sister, or my grandfather or grandmother, or my aunts or my uncles, my nephews. I didn't want to be like anybody in my family. I wanted to be me. God bless you, Dan. Praying for him, too. <laughs> Anyways, uh, he sees me for four years, too. So. I'm still living that way. That's why people don't like me. Because I don't, I'm not like the guy down the street, the other church, the other pastor. How come you're not like this pastor over here? How come you're not like this evangelist? How come you're not like Billy Graham? <laughs> or how about the, or you're not like Oral Roberts? You know, who knows? You know, I am never going to be what you want me to be, ever. Sorry. I'm going to be exactly what Jesus Christ wants me to be. Yeah. So, <laughs> I hope you got an earful of that because that, that's how it been, that's what's on my heart. Because the title is, As His Manner Was. What people want to do in today's world is they want you to stop doing the way you live your life and do it the way they're doing it. Yeah, it's called control. It's called socialism. It's called communism. Yeah, yeah, they want everybody to be the same. So that then when the one world government and the one world church and the one world Bible and the one world of everything comes into existence, you won't be, everybody will be like everybody else. And then the one guy or the one group of people who stand out from that, that it's easy to find them and cut their heads off. Yeah, easy to do away with them. That's me. I'll be one of the first ones who die if I haven't been taken out of here yet. Because I am not going to conform to this world. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not going to conform to the world. Sorry. I know most believers, most Christians, most ministers, most pastors, most everybody else in the entire world does all they can to conform to what they know of the world. Yeah. Why do Buddhists all wear orange gowns? Every single one of them wear an orange gown. What is that about? See, they don't want everybody to be an individual, how God made them. They want everybody to be exactly the same. That should tell you something right there. Just that alone should tell you you should never be a Buddhist. Because a lot of Christians have changed over to Buddhism. Because it's a better way to live. <laughs> That's what I've heard. <laughs> the Buddhist temple is here in Boulder. And the largest university outside of uh, wherever the Buddhists are uh, is here in Boulder. Naropa University is a massive university. And it's all about Buddhism. And the uh, United States Temple for the Buddhists, the Buddhist Temple, is right down Walnut, no, uh, Spruce, 14th and Spruce, right here in town. Big old temple. Been there forever, as far as I know. Uh, and, uh, the reason why the Buddhist Temple is in Boulder is not because of the university. They've told me because, uh, they, uh, because Boulder is a, quote, high place. <laughs> so that's where they put the temple, high place. And every other religion too, not just Buddhism. I just happened to be because a couple of people who walked by me are into Buddhism. You know, Buddha, you know, the guy, the Buddha, the big fat guy who overate and was, didn't take care of his body and died early in life. You know, glutton. He's a glutton. 
He, you know, it's just people like that because he was so fat and so, uh, la you know, whatever. It just now, let me say something else too. Of all the people who are in Boulder, you know the friendliest, kindest people to me, the Buddhists. Yeah, they're the most respectful, the most kind. I've never had one Buddhist, and I've seen tons of them in here in Boulder, have uh, rejected or you know hit on me in any way, shape, or form. The second most friendliest people, get this, this is really amazing. Uh, now it's changing a little bit, but over the last several years, up to about a year and a half ago, uh, after the uh, health issue, but up to the health issue, uh, the second most friendliest people were uh, Muslims. Yeah, how about that? Muslim people were the second most friendliest people. Outside of the Christians, how about that? <laughs> But now, it's, that seemed to be changing. I've noticed a lot of Muslim people moving to Boulder, and they're not very friendly. I don't know why. I don't know why. It seems kind of odd. It's not normal. And it kind of piques my interest in why there's so many who are so unfriendly, where previously they've always been friendly. I've led some Muslims to the Lord here in Boulder. You know, so... Uh, I don't know. It's just interesting. <laughs> Part one. Yeah, it's really funny. I wanted to do a 15 or 20 minute video so I can go home, get it done, because I got other things I got to be doing. But this is not going to be one of those. Holy Ghost has a different agenda. And guess whose agenda do I want to follow? Preacher John's? Mine? Somebody else's? No. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God, and I'm going to follow the Spirit of God. Part one, Sunday, is Acts 17, 1 through 4. That's where our, we're going to do 17, 1 through 4. All right, let's read down through this. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apol, Apol, Apollonia, Apollonia oh, probably, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, there's our title there, and Paul, as his manner was, went into them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Reasoned with them out of the scriptures. He used the word of God to preach from. He didn't, now in that era, we know that there are all kinds of humanistic books. A lot of humanism, a lot of books written about all kinds of idols all over the world during this time. But Paul didn't talk on any of those books. He didn't use any other religious books. He didn't. He used the Word of God. See, that should tell us something right there, too. Too many believers use every other book in the world rather than the Word of God. Yeah, they don't use the Word of God. They use their pastor's book that he wrote, just his brand new book that just wrote, just wrote. They'll use that book. They'll spend all their time reading that book. Oh, the Bible. Oh, I haven't read the Bible. For, you know, they don't have time to read the Bible because they're reading their pastor, the pastor's newest book. Hint, hint. But Paul wasn't doing this. Paul wasn't doing this. Because his manner was, was not to read some other preacher's book. His manner was to read the book and, from the author and the finisher of his faith, Jesus Christ, the Word of God. How about that? That's kind of a novel idea too, huh? How about that? Wow. Man, maybe we should be reading the Word of God. Which one do we read? I read 17 Bibles, 17 different versions, and I don't know which one's which. They all say something different. That's what I got there in Golden. 17 Bibles. 17. I mean, man, that's a stack like, I mean, like that? And you go through all of them. They all say something different. You know the one he doesn't read of those 17? Yeah, that's right, the King James. That's not in the 17. I, I talked to another pastor. He's not in Boulder anymore. He moved to Wyoming, but he pastored a fairly large church here in Boulder, and uh, he met me a couple times. Uh, no, kept met me once, but his friend met me several times, and his friend brought his pastor to him to me, and he wanted to he wanted to uh, talk to me because what I preached was different than what his pastor was preaching. How can it be different when I'm in the Word of God? Well, I found out why it's different. Yeah, I didn't know why. But he kept saying, you're not preaching what my pastor preaches. And so I'm going to bring my pastor and let him talk to you. 
that's what happened. So he brought his pastor, and for about an hour and a half or so, we talked. Did you know he read out of every, he has every, all kinds of different Bible versions, and he reads them all. You know the one Bible he does not read out of and refuses to read out of? That's right, the King James. So therefore, if he doesn't read out of the King James and I preach out of the King James, I don't talk like his pastor talks. How about that? That's what he said. After three, four, five, or six times his friend, he did his name, now Todd was his name. That's right, Todd was his name. Now, you know, that was the Satan, you know. He, anyway, uh, and he said, I, you, know, you don't talk like my pastor talks. And because I found out that his pastor does not read this book, the King James Bible. And uh, he had a lot of twisted, perverted doctrine. Yeah, it was really, I mean, he was a nice guy, friendly, very pleasant to talk to, very personable, very kind. But when he opened his mouth and talked about scripture, it was wrong. Much of it was filtered with lies. Some truth, some lie, some truth, some lie, some truth, some lie. And that's why this guy who came around me so much uh, said, uh, you don't preach like my pastor preaches. You don't teach like my pastor teaches. And that's why. It's the Bible. It, the Bible is the main issue in the Christian's life. It is. See, people just don't get that. Let's say you're an auto mechanic. And you, uh, right now, the car's going by as a uh, Subaru. That's a Subaru right there. Okay, here's a Tesla. So there's a Subaru and a Tesla. Okay, you're a mechanic. And you pick up the Tesla auto mechanic book to work on the Subaru. And you look at, man, this book is so messed up. I have to rewrite this book to match my Subaru that I'm working on. Huh, you hear that? Or it goes the other way. You have a Subaru mechanics book, you know, that tells you how to fix everything on a Subaru. And the guy brings his Tesla in that was a red Tesla. His Tesla in, ask you to fix my Tesla. And so you get your Subaru book out and you're going, man, there ain't nothing in here that matches this Tesla. And so you start rewriting this. You start crossing this out, tearing that page out, rewriting it so it matches uh, the car you're working on. Instead of, you're, working, you're not working on the Subaru, you got the Subaru uh, book, but you're working on the Tesla. You see, so it comes down. Is it the car that's wrong? or the book that's wrong. Is the mechanic wrong? Mechanic's not wrong, he's a good mechanic. Excellent mechanic, top-notch mechanic. Highly recommended. Let's say, good cars. Subaru's a great car, Tesla's a great car. Uh, longevity, they last a long time, uh, both on two different spectrums of the, of the car cycle. You know, one, and uh, but what's the, what is the, really the big thing that separates these two cars and the mechanic? The book. The book. The book is the one deciding factor. I, that's what changes everything. Not today, not tomorrow, maybe not next week, next year. But if you keep in those other books and you're a mechanic, you're going to go out of business. Or you're going to have to rewrite the Tesla book the Subaru book so it matches this Tesla book. Or you have to rewrite the Tesla book to match the Subaru book. And now you've got corruption like crazy. Now you don't know which is which and you got a mess. That is exactly what Satan is doing. That's what Satan is doing. And people think, oh, it's okay. That's what they say. A one person I was trying to talk to says, John, what does it matter? That's what he told me. John, what does it matter? It's no big deal. What does it matter what Bible I read? It's a Bible. That's what he told me. Husband, hard worker, big family. That's what he told me. The guy disappeared after I re tried to get him to come around. He asked me for prayer many, many times. He asked me how to be a street preacher. He lives in some other city, some other town, some other state. He disappeared. Doesn't exist anymore. I don't see him on any channel anymore. I don't see him following anybody. I don't... He disappeared. Because to him, it doesn't matter. What does it matter, John? You're so strict with the Bible. Well, the title is, As His Manner Was. 
because Paul did this as his manner was, okay? And, and Paul, as his manner was, went into them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, out of the holy scriptures that God breathed and man wrote. To get that, see that, see, that's what I'm telling. Slow down when you're reading the Bible. Slow down. Quit reading it like a comic book or reading it like some novel. It is a legal testament, a legal document. And your life is in that document. Because every word that you say, every idol, every word is going to be judged. You're actually going to be judged. Everything's going to be looked at. Everything. All right? Anyways. Reason with them out of the scriptures. Let's go on here. Verse 3. Opening and alleging. that Opening. He opened the scriptures. This Bible is open. I'm preaching out of the Bible. It's open. Right? I'm trying to open the scriptures, opening and alleging. <clears throat> they use the word alleging because these people were not believers of Christ. They, they didn't, you know, that's not what they were doing. Alleging that Christ, the Messiah, you know, Christ here in the King James is interpreted from Messiah. Messiah and Christ are the same words, right? He even tells you in King James, the Messiah, which is Christ, Christ, which is the Messiah, or something like that. Because Christ is not Jesus' last name. <laughs> I've even gotten that many times. It's been a while since I got that uh, rebuke. I said, uh, Christ is not his last name. <laughs> Duh, I know that. <laughs> uh, or somebody it goes the other way around. I thought Christ was his last name. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> oh, man. People are crazy. Opening a legend that Christ must needs have suffered. 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 What was the suffering? It's the passion of, of Christ, the death on the cross. He had to suffer, okay? And rise again, see? He died on the cross, and then God had to raise him again. Because of just the death, and that was it, Jesus wouldn't have paid the full price. Because we would have received Jesus, but then we would have no resurrection. We would be dead forever. Because what you sow, you reap. So God sowed his perfect seed, Jesus Christ. Therefore, when we receive that perfect seed, we become like the seed, which produces after its own kind. We become perfect. And well, guess what? Now, here's what I'm, I'm hearing people say. Oh, I'm never, I'm, I'm not, I can't be, I'm not perfect, nobody's perfect. See how that is a lie in the, that is a lie that Satan has sowed into your life. Nobody is perfect. I don't ever say that. I make a lot of mistakes, yeah, but I'm learning. You all, we all make mistakes because that's how you learn. But I am perfect in Christ. I am perfect. My sins have been forgiven. My name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. I have resurrection within me. I serve Almighty God. I'm a saint of God and a preacher and a minister of Jesus Christ. How about that? I'm perfect. In Christ. You get that? Well, that'll give a lot of ammunition for somebody who wants to hammer on me some more. You're not perfect, John. I can't even stand you. <laughs> Must needs have suffered, right? Uh, risen again from the dead, right? So God rose from the dead again, and rose again. All right, so uh, let's go to uh, that this Jesus. Oh boy, there it is, this Jesus. Oh man, I could tell you right now, a lot of people just scratch that out and put some other kind of name in there. Sometimes, I, this guy, he had a name that must have been 20 letters long. I couldn't even pronounce it. I couldn't even pronounce it. I've never even seen it before. But said, no, that's the true name of Jesus. Now, I've seen a lot of different names for Jesus. No doubt about that. But this time, this guy had a name I've never seen before. He said, this is the one true name of Jesus Christ. You know, he didn't use the word Jesus. The Son of God or Son of the Lord, whatever he said. And I go, wow. 
Wow, isn't that interesting? Therefore, you're not born again. You're not saved. You have not blah, 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 blah. You're a false preacher. You're a false minister. Because <laughs> you didn't call on this name here. Blah, 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 blah. I didn't call on that name. Therefore, you, you see the goofiness? And some Christians say, oh, oh, that's right. I got to follow after you. Yeah. Follow Jesus Christ. I mean, I don't know, it's just really crazy. Anyways, let's go on. This Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ, the Messiah, Christ. This Jesus that Paul was showing, detailing in the scriptures is the Messiah that God prophesied would come. You know, the one from Bethlehem, you know, on and on and on. A lot of scriptures, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of prophecies about Christ. Verse 4, and some, <laughs> some, a little tiny few, like I said, just a small bit, not the other 75%, just some, some, not all, but some, <laughs> some of them believed. Some of them believed, most didn't. Some of them come out and preach the gospel, most don't. Some read the Bible, most don't. Some cast out devils, most don't. Some lay hands on the sick, most don't. <laughs> it's just, some give to preachers and ministers and churches, most don't. Isn't that great? The guy with, I got about half a dozen people over there looking around. Trust Jesus. Amen, God bless yeah. you, sister, thank you. Trust Jesus. All right, let's keep on going here. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas. Consorted. Uh, if you look in the middle there, it says S-O-R-T, sort. Sort means to, uh, uh, con means, C-O-N could have the meaning to uh, uh, be like or be with, and sort means to separate. Okay? It's like the, when you do your dishes, you separate uh, the knives from the forks and the spoons, and you put them in their individual little slots in your, you know, your silverware drawer. For example, you know, and uh, or you sort your plates out, or you sort your clothes out. When you do your laundry, you sort the clothes out, or your maid, or whoever does your laundry. I do my own laundry because I don't have a maid. <laughs> and uh, so that's consort to sort out. And so they were uh, separating themselves from the people that did not believe to those who wanted to believe, right? And they, they joined themselves with Paul and Silas. And of the devout Greeks, a great multitude. And of the chief women, not a few. Devout. So the Holy Spirit wants me to talk on this word devout. D-E-V-O-U-T, devout. When you look up the word devout, there are nine ver uh, verses, nine scriptures in the New Testament with the word devout, devout. All of them are in the, all but one are in the in Acts, one is in Luke. So what he wants me to do is finish this up by doing this here, Luke 2.25, uh, Luke 2.25. And uh, the word devout becomes pretty important when you do this, what I'm gonna show you to do. If you don't do this, you're gonna miss lots of scriptures in the Bible. You're not going to understand it because you're going to, you need to do this. You need to take a word and then go through every time that word is mentioned in the Bible from cover to cover, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And look at all the times that God used that word. All right? For example, here's Luke 2.25. And behold, there, there, wrote, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. Devout, all right? Devout. God bless you, John. Uh, Acts 2, 2, 5. Let's go to Acts 2, 5. Acts 2, verse 5. Acts 2, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jer Jerusalem Jews, devout men, 
out of every nation under heaven. See, devout men. In other words, so you want, you want to know why God is using the word devout here. So you have to go look at all the verses. Acts 8.2. Acts 8.2. Acts 8.2. Acts 8. Verse 2. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentations over him. So we still, you can see that we still don't have a clear definition, a clear understanding of the word devout. But it becomes a very important text, a very important word. Acts 2, Acts 10, verse 2. Acts 10, verse 2. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. So there we go. Now we have an understanding and a, almost like a definition of the word devout. A devout man and one that feared God. Devout man that feared God. So devout would mean one who fears God. And if you go to our GC Truth Study, you'll notice that the first seed after God the Father is fear God. You need to be devout. You need to fear God. And that, that seed is the initial door of receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now, I say that because of what Jesus said. You, you, you believe in God, or you, say, you can also say, you fear God, fear me. <laughs> or believe in me. Who sent me? God sent me. Something like that. Devout. Let's go down to 10.7, Acts 10.7. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. So isn't that interesting? Devout soldier. One who feared God, right? Let's go to uh, Acts 13.50. Acts 13.50. 13, 50. All right, 13.50. Uh, but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them. So you see right there, but the Jews stirred up the devout, the women who feared God, the women who feared God. How about that? Isn't that amazing? And 17.4, uh, 17.4, let's go 17 verse four. That was the one we just read. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks a great multitude. See, devout Greeks. So these are Greeks that feared God. Lydia was a Greek who worshiped God. Worship God. All right. Uh, Acts 17, 17. Acts 17, 17. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. See? So he kept talking to those people who feared God. Because if you fear God, there is a big, 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 big chance, big opportunity that that person who fears God will do the right thing, and the right thing is to receive Christ as your Savior. Right? Acts 22, 12. Acts 22, verse 12. Acts 22, 12. 22, verse 12. Last one. 22, verse 12. And one Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there. See what that is? An Ananias, a devout man, according to the law. He feared God according to the law, the Torah, the laws of Moses, right? No other God before me, right? That's an element of how do you fear God? Well, you don't put any other God before God. That's the 75% of the people, the parable of the sower, 75% of the people put something else before God. They put their house before God, and then after that, they put their field before God, they put their business, their schooling, their love, their wife, their mothers, their brothers, their sisters, their everybody before God. See, that, viol that's, that violates, you cannot have the mannerism that Paul had when you have everything that's between you and God. You gotta get rid of all that stuff, fear God, because if you don't fear God, you won't get rid of any of that stuff. You'll keep it there, you'll keep it there, you'll keep it there, you'll take care of it, you'll take care of it, you'll take care of it. Just like this guy here. He doesn't fear God. He is not a devout man. He's all about the world. 
He loves Jesus. Hope he hears this message. He, he, he loves Jesus. No doubt about that. He's born again. He's born again. But he does not care about the things of God. He cares about the things of the world. Period. Been talking to him for three, four years. Been on a couple of my videos. Interesting, huh? So that was, uh, uh, yeah. That was Acts 22, 12. So these are the verses here. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but devout. Devout. One who fears God, devout. Let's pray. So Lord, I thank you that uh, I fear you. In fact, well, not on this shirt, but all my other shirts, it has fear God. I believe that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom because that's what you said. I believe that the fear of God is the beginning of understanding because that's what you said. So therefore, I fear God because I want wisdom and I want understanding. And if I get wisdom and I get understanding, you'll probably, based on the Word of God, Word of God, provide to me knowledge. So when I have those three things, there's really, I can do whatever you ask me to do, Lord, because I have all the tools I need. I have wisdom, I have understanding, and I have knowledge. That's how you created and filled this world. So I thank you, Lord, that you're not just helping me, but everyone who's listening, or whoever will listen to this video, and who's a part of our ministry, and who is not a part of our ministry, who's not even saved yet. Lord, I ask you, ask you to save those who are not saved yet. And Lord, anybody who's sick in their body, Lord, I pray that you heal them now. I pray healing in Jesus' name over that body that's sick. And Lord, any devil that needs to be cast out, I cast that devil out now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray the blood of Jesus over that spot. And I speak the word of God. And I, Lord, I ask you that you bring people around them in Jesus' name. Hang on. Hang on. sirens all day long, all night long in Boulder. Do you know where they go to, generally speaking? To help the homeless. <laughs> who don't want to work, who don't want to obey any laws, that we have to take care of them because they demand it. <laughs> oh well, life goes on, man. Isn't it great? The poor will always be among us. That's why Jesus said, or Peter said, remember the poor, because it ain't going away. And it'll never leave. It'll never leave. It's our opportunity to give. And uh, so I give. And I give. I got a pocket right here. I'm all ready to go. I got tracks to give. I got cash to give. I always give cash. And uh, church, a couple of church cards. And uh, I give. If they don't want the tracks, they don't get the money. Period and they have to talk to me. I don't go up to somebody who has a sign saying, feed me, I'm hungry. Uh, they have to talk to me. I have to have a dialogue with them. And I gotta plant the word of God in their life. Then I'll buy them a sandwich or a cup of coffee or whatever the case may be. Anyways, that's it. God bless you, man. I love you very much. Take care, bye-bye.